welcome to day 30, I mean no, day 34, I mean 41, day 41. Now, some news going around, my video day 40 was way too long to put it into one video, so I had to do it in parts, again, like I did before, so that's why. So, we got our three reading loads, our technology's impact on soul society, Dabble and Pika Long Haul, and the Nursery Collection. So we're going to read this first. So last time we read, we read about the, another chaos that happened, so you guys have to go check that out. That was really long, so. Today's Wednesday in the world. It took me a long time to fall asleep last night, and, it, and I was woken up about 6 o'clock in the morning when the grocery store and police started arriving for work. But then the sun was up and it was already hot in the car. Plus we were all sticky and miserable from sleeping in our clothes. We walked over to the grocery store to see if they let us use the bathroom to wash up, but the manager said the store wasn't open for customers for another two hours. When we were talking back to the, when we were walking back to the car, mom said we can use baby Mandy's baby wipes to get cleaned up. But then she realized she accidentally locked the keys in the baby van. There was hope, though. The sunroof was still open, so Dad tried to fish the keys out of the cup holder. Why can't, like, one of you guys, the smallest one, so Mandy or Gregory, go in? After a lot of trying, he still couldn't get the right angle. So it looked like we were out of options at that point. But then Mom suggested Manny, Manny could get the keys in. So Dad lowered Manny through the summer by his leash. Well, he still had the leash on. That impresses me. We are, we are already halfway done with this book. Because it's super long and stuff. Like, look at all the pages we read already. Once Manny was in the van, he took his sweet time. First, he went to the back seat and ate two barbecue sauces packages we had left. Then he dug through my duffel bag and found a pack of Oreos I was just saving just in case. Manny finally made his way to the front car and got the keys. But instead of opening the door to let us in, he started the engine. Then he filled with the knob of the stereo until he found a radio station. He went, the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Come on, Manny. Mom and Dad were pounding on the windows trying to get Manny to open the door. But then Manny put the car in drive? No, 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 baby, drive. I think he took... I think until then everyone had forgotten that Manny had been trying to run away because we never let him, we would never would have made the mistake of letting him in the van by himself if we would have remembered. We and Manny wasn't tall enough to reach the gas pedal because if we could, we would have been long, he would have been long gone. He smashed into a bunch of trolleys. I think Manny knew his escape plan was full, foiled, at least for now. Mom finally convinced him to lock the doors until, and let us in. Once we got going again, I started seeing more familiar sights out the window because we were basically retracting our path back to home. We were coming up to the town where we spent the first night of the trip. And when we passed by the motel we stayed in, I saw the craziest thing. What did you see? There was a purple fan in the parking lot. The purple van. The Barrio family. I told Dad and he pulled over. We took a closer look at the van, and sure enough, it was one of the that belonged to the Barrios. That meant they were staying at this motel and were probably using Mom and Dad's credit card to pay for it. They parked our car at the side of the building. Dad said we were going to call the cops, so he got out to use his phone at the front desk. But 30 seconds later, Dad came running back to the car. He said the Barrios leaving their room to go down the pool, and it looked like their door was left open. Mom said we should stick with the plan and call the police, but Dad said that before we did, we should do a little vacation aid of our own. So all we, so we all got out and followed Dad to the Bairdo's room. Just like he said, the door was a, open a crack. Dad nudged it open a little wider, and we peeked inside to see if anyone, anything about was sitting in plain view. But we couldn't see any of our stuff from where we were standing. Careful, you don't get caught. Mom seemed pretty uneasy about what we were all doing, but then Dad pushed the door all the way open and there was no turning back. Oh my gosh, you guys have to be very careful. 
We couldn't find anything of ours, so if the Bardos did have any of this stuff, they probably carried it with them to the pool. But as long as we had to run out of their room, we decided to take full advantage of it. I figured it was okay since we were the ones paying for it. Careful, guys, don't get caught! I think Mom felt we were setting a bad example for May, so we took him, so she took him out to the car. But the rest of us weren't finished. Me and Roderick took turns using the bathroom while Dad stood and watched the door. Then he, then he went in and told us to look out for him. We had pushed our luck, though. The second the dad shut the door to the bathroom, I saw the bear that was coming our way. Now, I love my dad and all, but I'm too young to die. So I bolted, and Roderick was right behind me. I wasn't there to see it, but I'm guessing it was pretty awkward when Mr. Bairdo opened his bathroom door. Oh, my God. Me and Roderick got in the van and walked the doors. I was pretty convinced that I wasn't going to make it out of the room alive. We were just going to have to go on without him. When Mom... But Mom pulled the car around to the front of the motel, and when she did, Dad burst out of the bare nose room. Oh, my God. Somehow, Dad had gotten away, got the gun ready to grab the car, their car keys on his way out. Before he got in the car, he, checked, he chucked the keys into the, some of the bushes, which brought us some time. I think we must have gotten two miles above, two miles down the road before Dad even bought to pull his pants back up. We high fought each other because we had to escape for our lives. But in our rush to get away, we forgot to turn on the heater. And a few seconds later, the radio conked out. Spanners. Mom had to cut across two lanes of traffic to get to the van and to, into the breakout breakdown lane. But in the spot where we pulled over, there was a broken bottle, and we rolled right over it. <laughs> That's not good. When we got out of the car so we could change the tire, Dad opened the back hatch to find his jack, but unfortunately I had taken it out before we left the trip to make room for my pillow. The only thing we could do at this point was wait for help to come. Eventually a car pulled over behind us, but when we got closer I knew we were in big trouble. It was a purple van. The same car. I heard the Bardos might actually try to ram with us with their car, so I braced for impact. But the van slowed down, and when the doors opened, it wasn't the Bardos at all. So they're just helper guys trying to help them out. It's pretty obvious that whoever these guys were, they were able to help. But they didn't speak English, so we were having trouble communicating with them. Mom and Dad tried to act out what was wrong with the car, and I'm sure those. Two guys thought my parents completely lost their minds. They may surprise everyone by speaking in perfect Spanish. Starting the little amigos gracious porn. What? Sometimes it's a baby learn that stuff. The, com the conversation between Manny and the two guys lasted a long time, so I figured Manny was explaining everything that happened on our trip. I must have done a good job making the guys feel sorry for us because the next thing you know, they were offering us a ride. And I'm happy the air conditioning was working great. I think we assumed these guys were taking us to the mechanic or something. But we were wrong. We should have known that if Manny was the one doing all the talking, we weren't going to where he wanted to go. And wait, are we? Are we? Wait, 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 wait. Read aloud. 42 is when we finish this book. Bro, we didn't even last a whole month with this book. And we're already finished with it. So look at that. We already get to start a brand new book today. Alright, let's do our The Nursery Collection. So last time we read, we read about... My best friend and some teddy bears. So now we're going to read about, oh dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? 
Oh dear, dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can be the matter be? Johnny's so long at the fair. He promised to buy me a bunch of blue ribbons. He promised to buy me some bonnie blue ribbons. He promised to buy me some bonnie blue ribbons. To bind up my brown, bonnie blue brown hair. Oh dear, what can the matter be? Dear, dear, what can the matter be? Oh dear, what can the matter be? Johnny is so long at the fair. There's a little brother on the swing. So that was just real quick, not that long. And tomorrow I'm going to read about five little peas and one finger, one thumb, which is actually a song, so that will be in day 42. And now we're going to read our last book for the day, Technology's Impact on Society. So last time we read, we read about the trailer of a poem called... So this is technology in the in the Lowell Mill Girls. So let's read about it. When I set out for Lowell, anonymous number one. When I set out for Lowell, some factory for to find. I left my native country and all my friends behind. And now, but now I'm in Lowell, and and, and I be summoned by the bell. I think less of the factory than my native bell. Young woman spinning cotton in the factory, 1908. Now we're read. Alright, we're going to read this trailer. The next poem from 1893 also reflects on the conflict facing workers who had left their pastoral life in the country and were now a part of the industrial factory grind. So that's the trailer for a poem that we're going to read in day 42 called A Mill Picture by Marshall Putnam Robson. So you guys can go check that out. I'll see you guys later.